today we're racing this EV and this petrol SUV from Sydney to Melbourne over a distance of about 900 kilometres. That's right, today Chasing Cars is racing an EV and its petrol counterpart between Australia's biggest and second biggest cities over a pretty long distance by world standards to demonstrate the current state of EV capability and charging infrastructure. Why don't you tell us a bit more about why we're doing this, Johnny? Well, some people really do have to drive from Sydney to Melbourne fairly regularly, whether it be for family gatherings, weddings, or even just for work. So while previous generation electric vehicles could do that kind of distance, they required a bit more careful planning and for you to take your time at charging stations. But with better charging infrastructure here in Australia, at least between Sydney and Melbourne, and electric vehicles that can charge at rates of up to 350 kilowatts, and with ranges over 400 k's, maybe it's a little bit easier. On paper, it seems like it could work. Does it actually translate to the real world and how far behind this Hyundai Tucson will the Ionic 5 be? So, I'm driving the Hyundai Tucson from Sydney to Melbourne. It's a classic family SUV powered by a turbo petrol engine. Now, you can get this in other permutations with a 2 litre petrol non-turbo engine and also a turbo diesel. But this car should get around 6.3 litres per 100 k's on the motorway and that's going to let us get about 850 k's, so almost all the way to Melbourne. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it compares to Tom's Hyundai Ioniq 5. So while Johnny is driving a petrol powered SUV that's very familiar to many Australian families, this car is Hyundai's idea of the future. And that means that under the skin where you can't see what's going on, there's 350 kilowatt recharge baked into this vehicle. What does that mean? Well, Hyundai says it means you can recharge from 10 to 80% battery capacity in 18 minutes. Now, 80% battery capacity is somewhere in the vicinity of 350 kilometers or so. So all of a sudden, you're looking at a car which makes these long road trips a lot easier. This one is the dual motor all wheel drive version with 225 kilowatts of power, making it, I guess, something of a hot hatch or hot little SUV. Either way, it's about $20,000 more expensive than the Tucson. So while electric cars are getting cheaper, they're not yet at parity, but they're kind of not the reserve of the ultra wealthy anymore. They are starting to get down there in price. Last step before we get onto the road is to talk about the rules and the route for our trip. So a major interstate highway connects Sydney and Melbourne, which are Australia's two biggest cities. There's a distance of about 880 kilometers between them and we'll be taking the most direct route because that's what almost everybody traveling between these cities by road will do. That mostly means divided highway with a 110 kilometer per hour speed limit. Those are conditions which typically favor traditional petrol and diesel vehicles, whereas they do make life harder for electric cars. So both Johnny and I will be taking the most direct route. John will need to refuel the Tucson at one point, we think, whereas our strategy in the Ionic 5 will be to top up the battery at more regular uh, increments, but only a small amount, because with the Ionic 5, what you want to do is you want to be recharging from lower states of charge, sort of 10 to 30% state of charge. So we're aiming to get to each of our recharging spots, four of them in fact, with charge of around that level, so we can jam charge into the vehicle quickly and get back on our way. But the ultimate test is going to be that stopwatch running once John arrives in Melbourne. We'll be finishing up at the Tan Track, one of the picturesque uh, parks in Melbourne. And the question is, how far behind will the Ionic 5 be? So we're very much on our way out of Sydney here in the Tucson. Now, if you know this drive pretty well, like I do, the Sydney to Melbourne drive, you'll be pretty aware of where we are right now. We're just crossing through into the Southern Highlands past Pheasant's Nest service station and on the way to Goulburn. And that's where these two cars are going to split up because Tom in the Ionic 5 is going to run into the Goulburn Charge Fox Centre and top that car's battery up a little bit with the 350 kilowatt ultra rapid charger. Now, that's where this race gets interesting because although we're not outright racing, that's where I'm going to take a lead because this Tucson's only going to really need to refuel once and I'm going to top the whole tank off. But the thing with a petrol car, obviously, is it takes almost no more time to put 10 litres in versus a whole tank. So that's one of the big benefits of this thing. And also I only have to stop once for fuel, whereas Tom's gonna have to stop, I think four or five times along the route. So we're just about to make our first charging stop in Goulburn because we don't have quite enough range to make the next ultra rapid charger 
on the Hugh Highway to Melbourne. And what that means in effect is that this is the place where Johnny is gonna start building an advantage over us in the petrol powered Tucson. All right, Johnny, you're off at this point. Here's where your advantage commences. See you in Melbourne. See you in Melbourne, mate. Should be fun. So off Johnny goes, but the big question on this test, which I don't know the answer to, we're gonna find out together, is just how far ahead John's able to get because he has to stop for fuel at some stage. That's gonna cost him time. He'll need to stop for a comfort break, maybe two comfort breaks, depending on how much, of, uh, how much water he drinks on this trip. Um, but our recharging stops are really short, so maybe the gap is gonna be really small. Uh, I guess we'll find out together a little bit later on. Okay, so Alec and I have just had a lightning stop at the Goulburn 350 kilowatt charger. Uh, we were only on the charger for eight minutes um, because we were charging a little bit quicker than what I'd estimated. We arrived with 42% in the battery of this Ionic 5, uh, plugged straight in, and we were able to start uh, sucking down about 142, 143 kilowatts uh, of power, which was a bit higher than my estimate. As soon as the car hit 60%, it dropped down to 120 kilowatts. All of this was was expected based on the Ionic 5's charging curve graphs, which kind of show you at what state of charge will you be able to get what charging speed. It all gets a bit technical, but effectively you want to run the battery down a little bit further before you start ultra rapid charging. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing at our next stop in Gundagai. Now, why am I going 46 Ks an hour? Well, unfortunately the first ultra rapid charger on this road trip, the one here in Goulburn, is off the highway and it's off the highway at the wrong end. So to get back on the Hume and get going back on the way to Melbourne, you've got to go through the town center. Um, now, when you're taking your time, it's all very pretty. It's all very nice. Um, but on a, on a exercise like this, it's certainly a delay. And I'm just thinking in the back of my mind right now, you know, Johnny is doing 110 kilometers per hour somewhere south of here. We're doing 30. So we're traveling through what I think is one of the prettier parts of the Hume Highway. We're just outside of Jugyong. We've gone past landmarks such as Goulburn, where we left Tom in the Ionic 5, and it's about time to pause for my break. And the great thing about this petrol-powered car, of course, as good as EV infrastructure is going to be, as good as charging infrastructure is, there's still extra freedom in Australia aided by this petrol car. It means I can stop wherever I want, and because we're rolling into this lovely little town, Jugyong, I can just pull over here and enjoy a lovely coffee at the Long Track Pantry, which is one of my favourite spots to stop on the way from Sydney to Melbourne. And now, going past Gundagai, it sounds like I've just leapfrogged Tom again. Now, he went past me while I was stopped for my break and having a little bit of lunch, but he sounds like he's stuck with a broken 350 kilowatt charger and a bunch of Teslas occupying the rest of them. So here we are at Gundagai, almost halfway between Sydney and Melbourne. That's actually Tarkata, but close enough. Anyway, this is the next 350 kilowatt charging installation after Goulburn. Now, this run for us is only as good as the infrastructure. The Hyundai Ionic 5 is, is fine. It's capable of 350 kilowatt charging. But what happens if a charger is down? Well, that one, that 350 kilowatt charger there, is down it's been faulted for about a week charge box and tritium haven't fixed it yet so that means that here there's just one 350 kilowatt charger left well when we arrived a uh, model 3 unfortunately was camped in the spot it had finished charging uh, so that left us with just one option which was the the sort of junior burger charger here the 50 kilowatt version so we jumped on that charged for about five minutes quite slowly until the owner of the model 3 finished up with their meal inside and, and came and collected their vehicle. We've now jumped across to the 350 kilowatt charger. We're seeing speeds above 200 kilowatts, so we're, we're well underway, but this mishap has sort of meant that we're five to 10 minutes behind where we should have been. And in the context of this race, will that make an impact? Well, we're gonna find out, but it goes to show that in peak periods, Australia is definitely gonna need more of these ultra rapid chargers as electric cars get more and more popular. Back on the road again, well, back on the road again, 
Hello, Tom. How's it going in the Ionic? It's going well, it's going well. So we've just uh, passed the 435k mark. So we're pretty much halfway to uh, to where we're gonna meet you in Melbourne. We're just past Tarkata, uh, which is you know known as the halfway point between Sydney and Melbourne. Where about to you, mate? I am actually halfway between Tarkata and Holbrook at the moment. I've got about 463 on the odometer at the moment. So yeah, about 25Ks ahead of you. 463 yeah. on your odometer, 436. Yeah, so you're only a nose ahead really, and that's despite the charging frustration we had at Gundagai. So there's not much in it at the moment, is there? No, it's pretty comparable. And I, like, I have to stop for fuel really anyway. I'm getting close to a quarter of a tank. So if I want to make it to Melbourne comfortably, I'm going to have to stop at Albury Wodonga, where you're stopping anyway. So <laughs> I don't know, it's not that different. Neck and neck is the only way to describe it at the moment. So what... Uh... Yeah. So you're you're on a quarter of a tank. So what's your fuel consumption been so far? Well, according to my trip computer, it's sitting at seven liters per hundred k's, which is sort of okay, but not the six point three claimed for extra urban consumption. So yeah, I guess it's not going as well as I thought. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're also suffering because of these long hills uh, south of Gundagai. So my estimated yeah. consumption for for this trip was nineteen. We're actually on 19.9, uh, .9. and since we yeah, top, right. yeah, since we topped up at Gundagai, we're actually only doing 23.8. So yeah, it's uh, it's been thirsty on these hills, but I'm hoping that when it flattens out, as it will, towards the uh, yeah. the state border, we'll uh, we'll start seeing some better efficiency. Of course, it's not really a range test, but uh, it's a good opportunity for us to get plenty of data, isn't it? Now, of course, here's the slightly strange irony of me driving the petrol car, which should, in theory, have, you know, 800 k's of range if it's going to plan. But, um, well, I have to fill up. And I have to fill up here in Albury, Wodonga, uh, which is the same spot that Tom and Alec are going to be filling up. So I've got to duck in and put some petrol in, and they've got to duck in and put some electrons in. Now, I think they're about 20 minutes behind me in the Ionic 5, so... They are a little bit adrift, but yeah, I don't know. Depending on whether there's a line in the petrol station or something, this could tighten right back up this little race. So yeah, stay tuned and maybe we'll get to wave at them as they drive past us. So we're now here at Barnawana North in Northern Victoria, just outside Albury, Wodonga, and it's time for another reef stop. So this is probably the most unfamiliar part of running an electric car on a road trip like this compared to a petrol or diesel car because when you're capable of really fast charging like this Ionic 5 is you only need these very very short pit stops so you get out you stretch your legs you maybe go to the bathroom and pick up a bottle of water a coffee or a sandwich by that point you're ready to go case in point we arrived here with 17% uh, of charge left in the battery to get to our next stop at Euroa, we only need this to get up to 57%. We've been plugged into this 350 kilowatt charger now for about two and a half minutes. We're already at 29%. We're bringing in power at 212 kilowatts. So still some way shy of the 350 kilowatt theoretical maximum that the Ionic 5 is capable of. But at this rate, we're only gonna be here for another six or seven minutes before we're ready to get on our way. They caught me in the middle of accelerating back up to 110 k's an hour to join the motorway after refueling. So essentially, I'm now only seven k's ahead of Tom. Now we're in Albury Wodonga, which is sort of two thirds of the way down to Melbourne. What have I got on the odometer right now? 543 k. So we're here at our final charging stop at Euroa. Uh, we're pretty close to Melbourne now, but this is still a pretty close fort thing. Of course, this final charge is going to slow us down. So we'll quickly get going we'll grab our type 2 CCS not the Chatamo get it in there and then it's a matter of grabbing the smartphone app we've been using ChargeFox today they're not the only network but they're probably the biggest in terms of ultra rapid at the moment it's recognized that uh, there's a car plugged in my accounts ready to go straight away and the charging session uh, gets started just like that so Props to Chargefox, the app actually does work pretty well. Not sponsored content, just what we've chosen to use today. Quick 10 minute charging stop here, then we'll be on our way to meet up with Johnny in Melbourne and we'll be able to definitively answer the question of how much longer it takes you to do this 900k road trip 
in a current gen EV versus a traditional petrol car. All right, we're getting close now. Okay, so we're now on the home stretch into Melbourne, still on, uh, on the Hume. Uh, we've basically been on one road for the entire day. Uh, so Euroa was another convenient recharging point. Um, the thing about this car is because it just charges so quickly, it actually almost beats the comfort brake that you're taking. By the time you run inside, you've done your business, you've grabbed another snack, the car is ready to go. And if you're following a charging strategy like the one we've used today, where you don't want to let it charge over 80% because that chunk takes the longest by far, you know, you just want to be getting to 75% and then running it back down to sort of 20 to 30% by the next charging stop. If you do that, it really is a very, very quick recharging experience. Anyway, about 90 minutes, just under 90 minutes of driving to go and uh, and then we'll know. We'll know uh, the comparative times between us and Johnny in the Tucson. It is 5.25 p.m. and I have just arrived in the center of Melbourne. I've still got to weasel my way down to the tan track, but we are in the belly of this rather trendy city and we've been on the road now for nine hours and three minutes. Now that does include stop times, but uh, yeah, it's been a big day. Well, we're in Melbourne CBD, um, stuck in a bit of traffic. It is six o'clock, so even though not that many people are working in offices at the moment, it's pretty busy as you can see. So didn't pass any red Tucson's on our way into Melbourne, but you never know. Either way, this has been a really close run thing. We have shadowed Johnny the whole way, despite the fact that we've had to charge, and that's an incredible achievement, I reckon. So yeah, looking forward to uh, to meeting up and working out exactly where the numbers fall for this, uh, for this race. We're here, stop the clock. Let's see how Tom does. All right, so here we are. Obviously, you did come in first. That was the result we expected. What time did you get here? I arrived at pretty much bang on 5.30. Okay, so we're just next to the Shrine of Remembrance here in Melbourne. It's now just coming up on 6, 10 p.m. So what that means is the Turbo Petrol Tucson must have made it here in just over nine hours from Sydney. Nine hours and eight minutes to be exact. Okay, and our result for the Ionic 5, nine hours and 47 minutes and 33 seconds. So there you go. obviously while it didn't manage a time as quick as a combustion engine car, I reckon it's a bloody good result to be under 40 minutes off, don't you, Johnny? I think so. And like my rest stops were pretty brief. Like I mm. could have taken longer rest stops and been more comfortable anyway. So yep. I don't think it's a big loss. Like 40 minutes is in the grand scheme of things. We're both here. Yeah. It's still light. So you felt like you set a pretty good pace on the way down from Sydney then? Yeah, not too bad, you know, just rolling along with traffic as I would normally do and yeah, just driving like a regular human and you mustn't have been going too slowly in the EV, not conserving energy or anything like that. No, I think for, for both of us, we'll, we'll crunch the data and put it up on screen, yeah. but I think it's going to work out that both of us had an average speed of, of just under 100 k's an hour while we were moving. You were probably moving a little bit more, which is where you made up the difference. Whereas the interesting fact was that for me and Alec, uh, we had to keep our comfort brakes actually fairly short um, because by the time we had used the bathroom or, or grabbed a bottle of water, uh, the Ionic was done. Um, it charges <laughs> quick. Yeah, it charges incredibly quick. While we never saw the headline 350 kilowatt figure, we saw a peak at about 220. And more importantly, it never dropped below about 180. So that meant all of the four times that we plugged it in briefly, it just zapped itself full of juice and we were back on the road. So our total time charging uh, was actually only 34 minutes, which I think is just astounding. Yeah. So I guess it kind of goes to show that if you've got an EV like this one with a range of sort of 300 to 400 Ks, for a road trip like this Sydney to Melbourne, that's enough. All you need to do is kind of make it to the next hop, which is sort of 200 kilometers yeah. away, and then quickly blitz it, you know, full of a bit more charge and get on your way. So tell us, how many times did you stop on the way? Uh, a total of three times, including a slightly longer lunch break. So one extra stop. I mean, that probably would have made me more comfortable, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I did it, but you know, an extra stop, especially if I had other people in the car, mm. I would have done that anyway. So. So when you say a longer lunch break, how long are you talking? I think it was about 25 minutes to get a sandwich, toasted sandwich and a coffee. And yeah. then I was on my way again. So and fuel up the car. Uh, yeah, and fuel up the car. Yeah, right. Coast, I mean, I think so. that's the thing. I think we might all imagine that these road trips include, you know, an absolute two minute lightning stop for fuel, but it's rarely the case, isn't it? By the time you've gotten out of the car, you know, rocked up to the Bowser, filled up, paid, found some food and, 
you know, navigated the maze and is a roadhouse. It's not two minutes, is it? No, it's, it's 15 minutes, and by which time the Ionic Fire would have taken on a significant amount of charge. So. Mm, exactly. So moral of the story, I think, is that the myth that EVs don't suit uh, long distances in Australia is pretty fundamentally broken. Uh, I think we've crushed that one today. Uh, we totally acknowledged that it wasn't quite as quick. We did run almost 40 minutes behind, but to be honest with you, Alec and I arrived here feeling refreshed. I've never felt better after <laughs> driving to Melbourne. I've probably done this drive in a day 10 times and I've never felt as refreshed as I am now. So breaking it up every sort of two hours, 200 Ks was actually really pleasant. And this is the way I would want to do it again. Next yeah. time I drive to Melbourne, I'm actually <laughs> going to be finding an EV that can charge quickly because honestly, it's a refreshing way to do this drive. So hopefully you found that interesting and informative we've certainly enjoyed ourselves today um, the only way to work stuff like this out is to actually get on the road get good data and drive the cars and we feel like that's what we've done very keen to hear your opinion though let us know down below in the comments what you reckon are you considering an EV has a video like this changed your mind and kind of opened you up to the potential let us know while you're down there in the comments make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell and as always thanks for watching chasing cars thank you